All right, what is going on guys? So in today's video, I want to compare the Surface Laptop 4 to the M1 MacBook Air. I made a video previously last year between the Surface Laptop 3 and the MacBook Air, and I felt like the clear winner was the Surface Laptop 3. However, with the M1 processor, things have changed. I don't wanna say drastically, but things definitely have changed in the game between the Surface Laptop 4 and the M1 processor. But if my voice sounds a little bit different, a little bit deeper, it's because I woke up about 30 minutes ago and I need to get this recorded and edited before work starts. So let's just go ahead and jump into today's sponsor, which is still my mailbox. So HelloFresh is still sending me stuff in the mail. So if you wanna take advantage of these nine free meals, go ahead, be my guest. First come, first serve. Keep sending me stuff in the mail. Free nine meals for everyone else. Anyway, let's start off with the overall Actually, let's talk about the spec I have inside the machine beside me. So this is the AMD processor, it's the Ryzen 5. And the reason why I'm comparing it directly to this MacBook Air is because they both start off at the same price at $999. Now, if you are a faculty member or if you are part of the educational system, um, like you're going to a university or whatnot, you can get a discount on both these laptops on the manufacturer's website. So. Microsoft Store, Microsoft Educational Store, you can get it for, I believe, 10% off. And then Apple's Educational Store, you get it for $8.99. So if you do meet those requirements, do take advantage of those programs because it does help, I guess, save you some money. Next up, let's dig a little bit deeper into the specs. So on the Surface Laptop side of things, you have the choice between the AMD processor and the Intel version. The Intel version, I think, is $300 extra, which is a... Um, Pretty sizable jump for most people, especially at this price point. Um, this does have the Ryzen 5 4000 series, which I think is a great improvement in terms of power efficiency and performance over the 3000 series. It would have been nice to see the 5000 series, but I don't know if Microsoft and AMD had some type of, I don't know, contract agreement and 4000 series is what they just settled on. But I think for the 4000 series inside this device specifically, um, in terms of who it's targeting, I think it's a really solid choice. You can go all the way up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is not upgradable. And then you also have the choice of going all the way up to one terabyte of SSD storage. Now, do keep in mind the SSD storage is not your conventional long M.2 NVMe slot. It's the one that's like a square. Moving on to the MacBook Air, you don't really have that many choices on what you can choose from. Um, so you have the choice between the M1 processor with the seven GPUs or the eight GPUs. Um, so I've said this. I've said this in all my videos. I don't think that the eight GPU cores inside the MacBook Air is worth the extra money, just because you don't really see that big of a difference. Um, you should probably just spend that money on the storage or the RAM because both those components aren't upgradable and probably serve you more longevity for the computer. So next up, I wanna talk about the overall build quality and I wanna start off with the Surface Laptop 4. So the outside is still all aluminum and in some configuration, you're gonna get this Alcantara on the inside. Um, so from my research that I've done or the configurations I've tried to buy, the AMD version is only coming in this Alcantara with platinum. Now, one thing I wanna say with Alcantara is that yes, it feels luxurious, it's comfortable, um, it's a lot softer. In terms of the typing experience, I feel much better typing on this laptop than the MacBook Air, but Alcantara is some type of material that you have to have some type of conscious thought of maintaining this because, you know, if the, the oil's from your hand, over time you're gonna have wear and tear on the Alcantara material and you might start to see it stain or lose its color a little bit. So just keep that in mind in, in terms of maintenance for the Alcantara. But this does also come in an all aluminum build on the inside as well. So. Personally, for me, I love Alcantara, but in terms of longevity, I would probably still elect to go over for the all aluminum design on the MacBook Air or even the Surface Laptop 4. Moving on over to the M1 MacBook Air. The MacBook Air in particular is known for its wedge-shaped design, whereas this one is more of a rectangular boxy design like the MacBook Pro. Um, personally, for me, I like the wedge-shaped design. It feels more comfortable to hold in the hand and walking around. Um, Apple's pretty much known for the build quality. It's all aluminum, really solid laptop. They haven't changed this design in years. Um, the hinge, really smooth. Um, so I would give these both pretty much the same score in terms of build quality. But there is one thing I wanna mention about the Surface Laptop 4, because it really just seems that they didn't really change too much of the design. It's just a refresh of the internal components. 
And the Surface Laptop 3 suffered a cracked screen, uh, hairline crack. Uh, Microsoft did address this saying that if you do have this problem, send in the machine, we'll send you a replacement. So do keep that in mind. I don't know if we're gonna see that with the Surface Laptop 4. Maybe they changed their manufacturing process in terms of the display, but we're just gonna have to wait and see how the public, I guess, fully stresses this laptop in the masses. All right, so next up, let's talk about ports. So the Surface Laptop 4 has a USB-A, a USB-C, and a headphone jack on one side. And then we have the Microsoft connector on the other side. Now, the MacBook Air only has two Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 ports and then a headphone jack. Now, I would actually give this over to the Surface Laptop because that USB-A port is probably still common for a lot of people, but it doesn't have a Thunderbolt port, which is pretty disappointing. It's probably just because of the AMD um, processor, um, Thunderbolt 3, I should say, because Intel wants to do whatever proprietary stuff they want to do. So yes, the MacBook Air only has two USB-C ports that are Thunderbolt capable. Um, I just think that with these two Thunderbolt ports, it just offers a lot more versatility on what you can do in a laptop later down the road versus just your standard USB-A and regular USB-C port. So I want to give this over to the MacBook Air like I did last year. So next up, let's talk about the displays. So the displays are a very interesting category. Um, I think nobody is going to be disappointed at the resolution of both these screens. They are really close. I don't think it's anything to talk about in terms of numbers. Um, the one thing you will notice is that the Microsoft laptop is a touch screen. So if you are a person who enjoys touching your screen or just having that ability to have a touch screen, um, I would say that the Surface Laptop 4 is a really good buy. Unfortunately, on the MacBook, we still don't have touch screens. I don't know if it's ever gonna come. We're just gonna have to wait and see what Apple decides to do with their roadmap. But in terms of the display, I also wanna mention that last year I gave it over to the Surface Laptop 3. But this year with the refreshed and upgraded MacBook Air with the M1 processor, with the P3 gamut display now, the colors do look richer as well than the Surface Laptop 3. The brightness is about the same. I don't think there's anything to rave over in terms of the brightness, but the display, I actually prefer the MacBook Air just because of its richer color quality as well. So next up, let's talk about the unlocking methods. And this is where it's also pretty much your preference of what you want, but personally, I prefer the facial recognition of the Surface Laptop 4. I'm gonna close this for a second, but the MacBook Air, pretty much we all know this, it's Touch ID, um, so you just, put your finger on the fingerprint sensor, it unlocks. But on the Surface Laptop, all we have to do is look at the screen and we're inside the computer, just like that. Now I wanna talk about the overall keyboard and trackpad. And I apologize if you can't see like the actual trackpad itself. This is a skin. I don't know why this is so dim either. So with the keyboard, with the MacBook Air, we now have the Magic Keyboard, really solid keyboard. Also the trackpad, Apple's MacBooks are known for their trackpads being top class as well. I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed on typing on the Magic Keyboard. It does feel a little bit more clicky than the Surface Laptop. But the Surface Laptop, one thing I want to note about the keyboard and trackpad is no matter what color scheme you go for, whether it's the ice blue, platinum, um, matte black, or the sandstone, which is gold, the trackpad and the keycaps actually match themselves. So it gives you a more a unique feel of your laptop rather than the traditional black and white keys that Apple offers on the MacBook. Next up is battery life. So one thing you wanna know about battery life is companies will claim to have large hours of battery life. Um, so both these companies for the AMD um, says 19 hours. Apple says this one is 19 hours as well on video playback. So I actually went to YouTube on a Chrome browser, left these both running at 1080p and surprisingly, they both died at the exact same time around the 12 hour mark. Um, for some reason though, looking back on it, I don't, I didn't notice that this screen dimmed at all and it was actually closer to the window. So I think when the sun came up, it actually cranked up the brightness. But regardless, one thing I do wanna mention about the Windows laptop is when it reaches 20%, it actually goes into a power saving mode. So the screen dims down a little bit and it sucks up less power. So do keep that in mind. I don't know if my tests were a little bit skewed because of that, but in terms of battery life, I think they're pretty much comparable in both departments. Like I said, the 4000 series for the AMD processor has become really efficient compared to the 3000 series. So in terms of battery life, I think most people are going to be okay. So now I'm going to show you guys the speaker test as well as the microphone 
and camera test, and you guys can tell me which one sounds and looks better. So this is a video and recording test on the Service Laptop 4. You guys can tell me how it looks and sounds. It looks a little bit, um, it's not as crisp and clear as the MacBook Air in my opinion, but I still do think that this is acceptable for what most people are gonna use it for. Real quick, I'm going to switch to a darker setting to see how the camera handles in low light condition. All right, so now in my kitchen in a little bit lower light setting, I think it actually looks a little bit better in my opinion. Um, yeah, basically in low light or even next to a window with good lighting. I think the camera looks pretty fantastic on the Surface Laptop 4. All right, so this is the camera test on the MacBook Air M1. Now, compared to the Surface Laptop 4, I would say that this looks a little less natural. It seems to be the whites are overblowing me a little bit, but I still think this looks pretty acceptable. There's also a little bit more clarity as well on the MacBook, but I'm going to switch to a more lower light condition, basically without as much lights beside me and see how the camera fares in that situation. All right, so now I'm in a bit of a lower light condition and as you can tell, as I move, you can probably see the grainy effect going on. So I do think that the Service Laptop 4 probably performs a little bit better in this condition. So if you don't have a lot of light around you or if you're in a darker setting, maybe you wanna let's go over to the Service Laptop 4 but I do think since I always say this, if you're doing like a conference call and your box is this big, I mean, it's going to look pretty good to most people anyway. And people are probably not gonna be looking at that box anyway, they're probably gonna be doing something else. But pretty acceptable by uh, today's standards for camera laptop, could be better though. The one thing I wanna say before I even start talking about benchmarks and performance is it was a lot easier comparing both these machines last year because in terms of the processing power in both those machines, you're getting pretty much the same, but with the introduction of the M1 processor, the MacBook Air in terms of the target audience and what it can provide for people now has almost completely changed the game for laptops in this price range. Um, so kind of like how I said earlier, both these laptops, it was a lot easier to compare last year, but pretty much I think what most tech people are saying in terms of laptop reviewers, I think if you are okay with settling going over to macOS, and even I believe Parallels had an update that gave it a lot of performance, this is probably the most bang for your buck in terms of performance and just also versatility on what you can do in a laptop. Another thing I wanna mention that people also don't take into account for MacBooks is their resale value. MacBooks also have a really good resale value. So, you know, if you do keep this for like two, three years, you can probably sell this for, I don't know, maybe, uh, not 100, maybe like 150 to $200 off of what you originally bought. So do keep that in mind in terms of resale value. I still do think that the Surface Laptop 4 is a really good buy if you want something like the Mac OS, or not the Mac OS, the MacBook build quality, but you just want that Windows experience. And you just want something a little bit more unique if you decide to get the Alcantara. However, it is just a little bit harder to justify because there's just so much more you can do with the MacBook Air and the M1 processor. Unfortunately, it's just something that Apple, I don't wanna use the word innovated, but the M1 processor really is a processor that has shown to be a processor that gives you almost desktop-like performance at a very low cost. So with that said, it's not as easy as if you like Windows, get the Surface. If you like Mac OS, get the MacBook Air. It's more of this laptop really is probably the best bang for your buck compared to both these laptops. And I do think even comparing the Intel version, it's not even going to be an option for which one you should choose. It's probably gonna be obvious at that point. But with all that being said, guys, like I said, I prefer the MacBook Air. Probably am a little bit biased because this is my personal machine, but objectively speaking, if I were to give the average person advice, 
it'd be the same one that I just gave you earlier. If you are okay with going over to Mac OS, get the M1 MacBook. It's the best bang for your buck. So with all that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this comparison video. I appreciate every sub, like, and comment. And as always, guys, I got to go to work in about 30 minutes. So much love.